I'm Jessica Jacobs, I'm from Queen Mary University of London in the Geography Department and this is Andrea, who's an artist. I'm an artist. Yes. And my neighbour. Anyway, um, we work together on the project, uh, we work, well, we've been working together on quite a few projects now. Um, the story that we wanted to tell you a little bit about today was, uh, well there's a few projects but we'll start with this one, which is the actual map is over there. So as a geographer, I deal with mapping quite a lot, um, but I'm always quite concerned about how maps are used um, and in, for what context. So when it comes to things like uh, the housing crisis in London, for example, which is a global challenge, um, I was quite curious to see uh, the way maps are used and in order to describe and plan in context and all sorts of, not just scientific and academic context, but in terms of practical and development context. And uh, Queen Mary is in uh, Mile End, which is in the borough of Tower Hamlets. Tower Hamlets has got a reputation or fame for being one of the most deprived boroughs or London boroughs in London and also in the UK. And um, it's represented by the local council and uh, in terms of a lot of the data that's created about it, like this. So this would be shading areas of all the deprivation or various problems that the area has. Um, uh, this is also from the same document. It talks a little bit about, yeah, it talks about deprivation and hardship. So whenever you hear about Tower Hamlets, that's quite often the narrative people hear. But it's also right next to the Docklands. It has the Canary Wharf in it. It's, uh, it's basically also talked about a lot because of its proximity to the, where all the wealth is generated. So you have this stark contrast between an area, a geographic location where all the wealth in Britain is quite often is produced, and next to it are these deprived communities uh, created by centuries of migration, a famous place where people come to London and then hopefully they make money and move. So it's got all these stories of mobility and deprivation and such like that. So um, as a geographer, it's very interesting to see how these places are not just contrasted, but they're very geographically close to each other. So the project we worked on was a public engagement project organised by our Centre for Public Engagement at Queen Mary. And they, every year they do a festival of communities. And in this festival of communities they set up a tent in a park in my land. It's, the, it's Queen Mary's way of giving back or becoming involved in a local community which is part of our remit as a public institution. And um, they organise a range of activities to sort of showcase what Queen Mary does and how how much fun it is actually. It's all based about, wasn't it? It was all supposed to be like, learning is fun. University is fun, come and join the fun. So um, we set up a table and uh, as a geographer, we wanted a map. So we wanted to create a map of um, Tower Hamlets. And um, I'm using the word counter mapping here because mapping is normally, it has a very long colonial history, as we all know. It's a way of territorializing other people's spaces. It's a way of control. It's about people coming from outside an area and uh, mapping something onto where you live. And there's a, I spoke to a town planner once and said that if you see planners in your neighborhood mapping you, you better be worried because something's coming. You might not like it. So we wanted to create a map that was ge kind of geographically accurate, but based on um, uh, the stories and perspectives of people who actually live in that map. So rather than a tourist map or this deprivation map, which is ba created by people who live outside, who are trying to analyse and understand, but they don't live there, we wanted to help and work with the people that came to this festival to try and create a narrative and structure uh, using felt and mapping. So changing the texture of maps, changing the physical data of maps, I don't want to use the word soft because it's not soft, it's very, it's still hard data, but um, some people would call it, it's, textually it's soft and sensuous. And by putting our artistic practice into uh, the process, uh, we, we, we're choosing a craft, not necessarily an art, but a craft, because um, felt making is a communal activity, it's non-hierarchical, um, it has no single author, and it's good fun, and no real skills are required to do it, although it, the help of an expert is always advised. Um, and then you can use it quite easily for community engagement. It's something where everybody sits around the table, they get the hang of in a few minutes, 
and they do actually have fun. And it's very bright and colourful, so people were drawn to the table just surely, purely by the uh, colours involved. Um, so, yeah, I'll just show you the activities. We worked with an, another artist, Emily. Uh, people came along. Uh, I don't know if you want to show some of the materials, but Andrea will talk about that later. I might distribute this. Uh, these are some of the objects that everybody made. The remit was quite simple. It's like, let's make something that you like or love about where you live. So a story about something related to the place you live in Tower Hamlets. So um, there's a big uh, Bangladeshi community. So we've got the national flower of Bangladesh there. We've got birds that people feed on the canal, lots of flowers. And because it was also about the housing crisis and a, a lot of the remit as well about this was about people living in social housing and what's happening to social housing in, um, in the country at the moment. There's quite a lot of um, houses that Andrea will talk about a bit later. So those were our colorful things that were produced. Andrea um, attached, or came up with the idea, we attached labels to them so that we can tell a little bit of the story with the actual products. They're all over there, you can read them, they're double-sided labels. Um, these are some close-ups of some of them. Uh, they're not, the actual map that we cut out, which took a lot of time, is actually geographically ac accurate. It is a London borough, but the, where we've actually placed everything is not that geographically accurate. So the cat didn't actually live at the top of that area, it was somewhere he wondered, else. That was his environment he wandered around That's in. where he wandered, <laughs> that's right. Um, so it was a really great day. I think we had a really, we had a really good time. We, we found a lot of people, especially um, a lot of the women that came from the Bangladeshi community, although they might never have done felting before, it, it came very easily to them. And they were amazingly impressive. I mean, this one, it's a sunflower, it was done by Noreen and Bethel Green. She just sort of knocked it up in a few minutes. She was like, oh yeah, I know what I'm doing. So um, that was very impressive. Uh, this is somebody who's a child, yeah, you're saying. I think what was, what was very important about it as well is having everybody sit around the table, having everybody sit around the table and doing something that's a practice and the conversations that came up between yeah. people in the community who'd never met each other before and I thought that was a very, um, that's the product. It's not, yeah. you know, and, and the next time we do it we're going to record all the conversations so that's part of the piece. Well, we right. do have a little bit. We've got people. We've got the hard data. We've got the names and some of the some of the comments here as well. And the stabbing, like it's constant stabbing. We can show you the needles. It's very, very <laughs> therapeutic because you're getting a lot of angst out. Um, it's reasonably safe. So um, yeah, so we produced this map, and um, again, it was Tower Hamlets. It became Our Hamlets. Play on the word Tower Hour. Thanks to Andrea. Um, and we want to put it in, we're thinking we want to try and put it in a library and we're going to make posters of it. We also have to say, um, have embroidered it and embellished it since in answer to that message, you know, the conversation about how things do have to look good to be taken seriously. And they already did look good, but we had to, we had to um, finish off the stitching, embroider around, do edging and things like that. Um, we're also working on the same idea with a housing development project in North London, in Kentish Town. It's going to be as big as the King's Cross, King's Cross Development Project. Am I? Um, I'll do it very quickly. This is the zone and the area, and we're working with the local community. Uh, we live in the local community as well. So we live up there by Gosford Oak Station. And we're going into schools and trying to use it as a consultative tool so that the council will use the ideas that we come up with in felt, and uh, that's the other map. Um, we're, we're working with school children to create icons, and those icons, this is a paper map, um, this is our felt map, it's using wet felt and dry milk, so it's, it is again geographically sort of accurate, but what's going on it isn't. So it's trying to create a direct conversation between this science and arts experience that through, through mapping and through um, not just like having a conversation but actually in the practice. Uh, these are some of the icons. First the children draw icons, then they felt the icons. Uh, this is, uh, and they use that's some of the icons they produced. Um, that's a weather station. Some, one of the children wanted to have a weather station. In the, 
that's what we were asking the children, what would you like in this area, rather than the... <coughs> and then we start, we're going to start cussing around and actually placing them on the map. So what we're trying to do is actually influence the local council and the government to start taking these ideas seriously and use some of these ideas and actually make some of the things that the children want to have in their new area that's being developed. That's enough to Andrea, so yeah. <laughs> I don't know whether there's much more for me to say that kind of pretty much covers Sorry. the that covers what the project was. I can talk more about why you know the benefits of felt making as a process for people to to use and engage with as I think pretty much what Jessica said is that it's a it's an art that anybody can use and there is nobody you have to feel you can compare yourself to because it's not a it's not a hierarchical art, it's a craft and um, also it doesn't have a long history. This needle felting has no real history at all and, and, uh, and it's very, very instinctive and it's very tactile and what we find what comes out is conversations come out through it. So, um, yeah, I don't really know whether I should add any more to it. Yeah, you were. Oh, and that's my own. <laughs> also, that I came to it through having, as a painter, um, I came to it when I had a small child because you can't paint in your house and you have no studio space. So I could express myself through through felt making because it's something you can put away and come back. And that's probably a comment as well. This is a wolf with the baby. That's a nest of baby birds being fed golden worms. So it's a bit like a comment on society that we're living in now. And then I took it into schools and I've been teaching parents and children how to felt and it's kind of spread around from there. That's, uh, and that's what we got. Oh, that's a map that the children in a room, we're in a very um, diverse school area. People from all around the world as well, from Georgia, some of them, lots of Bangladeshis, anyway, from all around the world. And they're mapping their world there. Um, in, 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 in. Anyway, I think that's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's <not. laughs>